come to Coco of the matter. On top of the chairman television station, Wazobia Max TV. Una go remember if una watch on Tuesday, say me and my own girl visitor, Oga Remy Adebayo, the editor of Montage Africa. We've been the countdown on the biggest stories inside Nigeria political arrangement for the year 2019. We talk about the war against corruption and how one senator, former governor of Abia State, Oga Oji Uzokalu, don't collect room and parlor inside prison for the next 12 years, depending on how that case go go. We also talk about the release of Colonel Sambo Dasuki, retired and Omo Yele Showare on the 24th of December 2019. We've been the ask whether federal government use them do for the Christmas or on a based on waiting court, don't talk since. We also look the work when we say EFCC do for 2019. And now then take Thai rapper, Poshu Yahoo boys, and people when we say they collect money when not be their own, based on 419 arrangement. We also talk about the quarrel when they always they happen between ASU and federal government. The one will happen last year where ASU even strike. All those they talk say federal government need to give them more money so that they go ensure say everything when they need to package our higher education inside of Nigeria, then go do and well. We also talk about this quarrel, shite movement, El Zagzaki, and the proscription that is to cancel IMN when federal government go court, go carry court. We can't talk about the final matter uh, when consign minimum wage inside Obodo, Nigeria. And Ogan Remy and Debayo are still there with me. I will continue from four, enter three, enter two, enter one. Go also talk about the message when President Mohamed Buhari been given on the 1st of January this 2020. So, make I ask you, Oga uh, Remy and Debayo, make we start with number four. Uh, people see the complaint of NSAS. They say some of these people, they can't behave when they behave. They not follow police behavior at all. Harass people, they, they stop people. Say some of these bad eggs, they spoil the good work when police they do. Make I ask you, for 2020, any hope? Thank you very much. Uh, I do not have, as I'm sitting down here, I do not have the statistics to really tell whether there's a reduction or there's an increase, or whether we are still keeping that problem at par. But all I know is that there are still crisis here and there. There are still uh, uh, splinter complaints about government, or sorry, public, police uh, officials, refunding people. Uh, I, I read some a story sometimes uh, last week or so, this week, of um, a, a DSS, although this is not police anyway, DSS official that was attached to uh, a, a, a high profile individual who wanted to shoot a cow and in the process, in the process miss his way and he killed somebody in the premises of that individual. Those are not the, uh, the signs that will be seen. So it is unfortunate if you see half it, but I think that uh, some of this problem will not just thin away. It has to take some time before they do, and it's going to take us a lot of effort at training and retraining the security agencies, making them to understand the use and the handling of their arms and ammunition, making them to understand that the citizens have certain rights, making them to understand that they don't know to be, to be careless or reckless while handling their arms. We need to let them to understand that the arms that they bear come at the expense of these people that they are supposed to protect. And I think another way is to reduce, really, the number of the men, the security attaches that were accorded or given to VIPs. Nigerians need more police on the, on the street. The budget we give to them is not enough. Their welfare is not enough. I believe when we can do this, Nigerians can actually come up again to ask for a reorientation so that the police could be the friends of the people as they are supposed to be. And with that, the incidences of SARS, the excesses of the police on the road and all this, I believe it could be doused for Nigerians to remain safer and for the police to be more responsible. Okay, thank you very much for that question. When we say, the way we take answer that question, and I will just talk again here, say, if we don't invest for inside something, and we expect many things they're different, it go waste our time. Very importantly, 2019, uh, it will be very big here inside of Odo Nigeria because we do general elections. Those who win, don't enter office. Those who do, we don't go agree. Don't go court. Courts don't talk. They don't accept. Make I ask you, elections will still come for this country. Which lessons we suppose learn from the 2019 general elections? Uh, when the first uh, poll, which was supposed to happen, I think, on the 16th, of uh, February was shifted by the National Independent, uh, Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, on the eve, it's not even on the eve, at the dawn, is it dawn? Yes, the dawn of the, of, the, of the election. 
while everybody had prepared for it, the president had traveled to Daura, his home state, to cast his vote. A number of political uh, actors had been at their places to cast their vote. Just for the, uh, the umpire, the electoral umpire, to announce the election had been postponed by, I think, a week. It was a sad one for democracy. It was a sad one for everybody because of the resources and preparedness that had been placed on that election. And because of the confidence that, the, uh, that INEC had given to Nigeria, we were assured that they were prepared for the election, only for that election to be postponed. So, and the result is that when many Nigerians wanted to uh, exercise their franchise, a lot of them that had left their bases had to return back to where they, where they stay. And in the process, they could not go back again because of, of course, resources to cast their vote again. It's dampened the spirit of many, and you can see that from the results that were declared. Out of over 86, is it 86 or 85 million Nigerians that registered to vote in that election, I think we had just little above 20 million people that came out to exercise that franchise. So it shows a lot about uh, the mindset of Nigerians towards that election eventually. Then also, when we went to the election, like I, you, I, I mentioned it now, it had an impact on the election. On the election day proper, there were issues. We lost some lives. We still had, although not in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the dimension that we used to have it before. We had loss of life. We had uh, snatch, uh, ballot uh, box snatching. We had places where carry that did not work, where we had to use incident forms. And all those things, of course, you know that they promote irregularities and malpractices in election. So those are the areas we feel that uh, INEC could improve in going forward. Then uh, there was an improvement during the governorship election of March 9. Yes, uh, things were a bit uh, calmer and we had some things. But when we talk about the, the, the results, the winner was pronounced. The aggrieved parties had approached the court. The, most of them have got the ju judgment up to the Supreme Court depending on the jurisdiction of, uh, jurisdiction of certain election. The governorship and the presidential election, of course, got to the Supreme Court. I mean, fortunately, for the first thing in my life, I saw the Supreme Court dispensing of a, a presidential dispute the same day. So that puts the whole thing to rest. But to me, it shows that in subsequent elections, INEC has to look so far into uh, its processes. I'm glad that the National Assembly is considering um, another um, amendment to the Electoral Act now. We hope that this time around, Card reader is going to be uh, uh, a process that is known to the law. Card reader is going to help us to foster a lot of electoral malpractices. We are thinking that uh, if in the wisdom of this Senate they can give us if voting, that can discourage so much interface between the uh, human and uh, an electoral process, is going to help us to save more life, is going to help us to give so much credibility to our elections. And uh, I believe that if all this can come before the president, we can have them before the election, we far, far, far before the election, I believe that uh, we are going to have something and um, subsequent elections credible. And if possible, we can even try with the Edo election that is coming and undo very soon. Organ hmm. Emiadebayo, make I ask this very important question because plenty of people they link this one uh, to what finally can happen for the election and how the court they go. But before I talk about that, we'll go break. When we go break, come back and go talk about Oga Water or Noge. No go anywhere when they come back. Now still cocoa of the matter. Welcome back to Coco of the matter. Before we go to that break, I've been telling us, say, we go talk about Oga Walter or Noge. But before we talk about the former Chief Justice of Obodo, Nigeria, make I just rewind, make could understand where the talk don't come from, from the start of the show. Oga Remy Adebayo, editor, Montage Africa, they would be inside studio. And from where we start, we've been they discuss the big, big things will happen for inside Obodo, Nigeria for 2019. And we've been start with uh, NSAS matter, and how people they complain about the work when we say police they do. We we'll also talk about the election. What happened inside of Nigeria for 2019, the general elections. In the talk, say if we pick the lessons moving forward, Nigeria go better. More we'll go talk about Oga Walter or Noge. As then talk the talk go up, talk and come down, and finally resign in position. Some people talk say all that pursue when they pursue, I'm to 
to resign. It got to do with how the 2019 election go take play out in side court. Make I just ask you, Oga Remy Adebayo, what do you reason about this matter of Oga Walter or Nonge? Well, um, the controversies surrounding the removal of the former uh, Chief Justice of Nigerian, His Lordship uh, Justice uh, Walter Onogen, it came, it was a rude shock when people started hearing in the news. It started as a, as, as a, as a rumor that uh, a civil society, an NGO, had approached the court asking uh, the CCB, CCT, that's called, uh, Code of Control Tribunal, to investigate or prosecute the man. And of course, many of us did not believe that it could come that way. But the truth is that um, uh, so much were unheft around the man. There was this allegation of uh, keeping multiple accounts, so much allegation around, uh, you know, uh, whether he was taking bribe or not taking bribe as CGN or judicial officer and all those things. And of course, when he had to go to the point that uh, he got a conviction from the CCT, then later it's withdrawal, stepping down, resigning to the president, the, the acceptance of the, of the resignation up to now. Well, I see it as another phase in our judicial system. Uh, many perceived that, that it was happening close to the election that, yes, certain elements did not want to see or not again presiding over the Supreme Court when cases would be adjudicated, you know. Some people felt that, yes, uh, the opposition may not have the upper hand at the election, or maybe they could actually win, but when events <laughs> eventually get to them, to the Supreme Court, it will come that way. But look at the painstaking process that we had at the tribunal in particular for the presidential election. It went that far, and uh, in the wisdom of the court, they gave a ruling, and the ruling is that the president was validly elected and he was eminently qualified to be the, 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 I mean, to be the candidate of his party. So that is it. But whether the perception has gone down or not is what I do not know. But I'm see, I think I'm aware that the former CJN is also still in the court uh, trying to clear his name. So until that is done, I will not hold him uh, absolutely com I mean, uh, convicted or not until the court says he is. Okay, we don't need to reach the point where we say, uh, we don't need to wrap everything we're consigned 2019. I go ask two questions now, two in one. One, now make we look all the things when President Mohamed Dubari talked, the important ones for January 1st, 2019. Make we ask, uh, as he lay out that plan for the year 2019, and with what we see for inside the year 2019, shall we go call him, Eku Eme, Eku Eme, I've been a God hand with it. And the second one now, from what did he talk on the 1st of January 2020? What did you think, say, Nigeria, suppose the target to make this our country go the permanent site? Over to your Garemi Adibayo. Judicial Commission, NJC, that had the discretion and had the power to recommend to the president, push forward the name of uh, the current CJN to the president. And in the wisdom of the president, he felt that this is the man that should work. The controversies or not is not important now. The only controversy that we have now is the insinuation or the position of the CGN uh, asking for implementation, blanket implementation, implementation of the Sharia law across the country, which I felt was so sensitive for a country like Nigeria. You should have left that one alone and continue to be the chief law officer of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Okay, Oga, uh, Remy Adebayo. Very important question as it concerns. We don't get new CJN uh, waiting Nigerians going to expect because some people don't look say, they be like, say, this leg, it needs no balance. And maybe we can ask this very important one as we don't reach where we will carry Wakaku, but inside studio. President Mohamed Buhari on the 1st of January 2019 may talk about implants for inside Obodo, Nigeria. Uh, plenty of people don't look that year, 2019, and waiting in talk, the important ones. Uh, then they look, say, she will go call them a queen, me, and we will call them, say, na God hand with it. And finally, as we don't date January uh, 2020, we thought it was President Mohamed Buhari been talked to, January 1st, 2020. What if we don't see when Nigeria is supposed to focus on top so that we go move this our country, go the Thank permanent you. side? Uh, as the father of the nation, the president will always come out to address the nation on the first of every, of every, every year. And the, uh, the nature of information that we are pushed out mostly, of course, we could have them I mean, looking at the future, gazing at the future, trying to make some plans for the future as it were. But um, if you look at what the president has continually uh, uh, restated 
when it comes to the matters of governance. He will talk about security, he will talk about um, uh, the economy, and he will talk about the fight against uh, corruption. Uh, in this year ending, I think the president has been able to achieve a lot when you look at uh, the areas of security. We have won some and we are losing some. One, winning some in the area of uh, S-Men uh, and uh, farmers confrontation that we had, they were so high about one, two years ago. That has gone down so much now. Uh, when you look at the matters of banditry, uh, kidnapping now, they have taken over almost everything from us. They have so much eroded the confidence of the Nigerians almost everywhere now. Everybody has this kind of mentality, this kind of psychology that we are under the siege. I don't know how many Nigerians can travel between Abuja and the Kaduna, uh, between here and Lokoja on road and will not be agitated. Nigerians so much live in dread and so much uh, phobia now that there is this mentality that I don't know what is going to happen next. And of course, you can have a takeaway from that. We have reference points. The killing in Ondo this year of the, the daughter of the Afeni Ferry leader, uh, Ruben Fasuranti, that is Arabi uh, Olakuni, Tony Olakuni, and many more that you have seen that way. Many people have gone down in the hands of kidnappers and bandits. So I think that uh, when you look at that side by side, uh, Nigerians are not faring well in terms of security. We have won some, like I said. The Boko Haram, of course, has been technically defeated as, uh, or decimated, as the president or the government will say. We give them kudos to that. But why saying that? We have to point them at the one that is taking a lot I mean, out of us. The fear will live under the siege of kidnappers under the siege of, uh, of, of, of insecurity. When you're talking about the bandits, you don't know when the next strike will be. We had it in, even happening in cities. We have it happening on the road and everywhere. So those are the areas of concern that I think that the president should look at. I know it may be addressing the nation again I mean, for the new year. It should go beyond addressing Nigeria. It should be about taking some more actions to address all these lapses that have been noted in the year. Economically, me and you, we tell that the nation is not faring well at all. Uh, the nation, the budget that we have this year is talking about so much volume taken into uh, uh, debt servicing to recurrent ex expenditure. And what do we have for capital expenditure? So it shows that we may not really have much. And it's not just about the budget lines only. What about the resources to, to, to meet them? So we are taking so much loans, so much debts are piling up on Nigeria that people are wondering what will happen to the generation that are coming after this government. We have so much dependent on oil. And I feel that by now it is time for the government to begin to consider. They are considering it, but I think not so much action are going into it. How can we genuinely take ourselves off the over-dependent on oil. That is the problem we have now. We have to be realistic with ourselves. Oil remains our mainstay. And as long as we have that one, we are not going to move and eat uh, better. Uh, we are talking about the mining sector where the government said is interested in as one of its efforts to take uh, a win and to diversify the economy. But the truth is that that still remains in the exclusive list. If you want states and other serious stakeholders to look at that, I mean, that sector to grow and groom the economy. I think we have to think about taking that aspect, that part of the law, I mean, of that list. We should take it to the concurrent list so that the state can have strong ties. They can have strong hold on it. So, and we are talking about uh, true federalism as it is now. Many of us have said that if you bring the best of brains or whatever all over the world to come and run the country the way it is today, it may not function effectively. There is the need to rethink about the structure of Nigeria. Nigeria needs to be truly a federalist state. The state needs to get more responsibilities and more resources. Local government needs to work and function effectively. They are the closest to the people. We have so much, we have a very, very bogus federal government that cannot function, that cannot work as it is now. We have so much parastatal, so much ministry that the president cannot oversight just by sitting down in Nasarok. So, Anybody that wants the president to function in this area that we have enumerated, either in security, economy, or everywhere, we must take a lot of this thing away from the neck of the federal government, give them to states, give them to local government. I can just imagine if we have the local government and states driving the agri sector, if they are driving the infrastructure like roads and things that I believe we are going to be better off for it. But when 
the president had to sit down in Nassau Rock and determine the street, the fate of the, of the road in front of my street in my hometown. It don't, I don't think it works that way. So why the president is putting every effort to, uh, to better the lots of Nigerians, I think the destiny of this nation rests on him to look at the more appropriate ways for Nigerians to work and to function. And that's going to account for him as a legacy that he can bequeath to generations of Nigerians to come. Nigeria can get better if we can look at the likelihood, the possibility of taking away some function away, whether we call it reconfiguration, as Professor Wale Shoyinka would call it, or we call it restructuring, or we call it fiscal responsibility, or whatever we want to call it. It doesn't matter. What matters is that if we want this nation to work, if the president really uh, thinks that uh, it can give something that generation coming after will be proud of, we should look at the possibility of restructuring Nigeria. Glad enough, the APC has a template in a committee that was headed by the Kaduna State Governor, Malam uh, Rfai. I think they can look at that and give that as a gift to Nigeria. Thank you very much for the way we say you take answer that question. But before we go, make I ask you, uh, would they like to make people wear Sabi where we advise Nigerians on how they will take care of themselves? Especially based on New Year, New Me, New Us, New Nigeria. We would just like to give us advice, sharp, sharp, for Kari Waka Komoti Inside Studio. Yes, in 2020, uh, Nigeria is good to enter another year. Gladly, we have, we have a win this year in that we have been able to return our budget cycle to January and this, to December. The president made that happen through the, uh, the uh, harmonious relationship between the executive and the legislator, uh, legislative. That's a very good one for us. But I think that what is going to make that to be feasible is when government begins to implement that budget. The economy is done, security is not uh, too fine, infrastructure are begging for attention, all of them are there. Government should begin to implement that budget as at now. Secondly, I want government to deepen the ethos of democracy. Government must take it as a duty to obey the laws. When you obey the law, you set the pace for the citizens to obey the law as well. And you are not creating anarchy, and you are giving the people the sense of restoring their confidence in the judiciary. It is our law, it is our court, it is our government. So we have to do everything that's possible to do that. When government respects my rights, I am responsible. I must be responsible as a, as a citizen to be patriotic to my nation. So when all this can come around and we are treated equal, it's going to help us. Don't also forget that whether we like it or not, the wide gap of division between Nigeria is getting larger, it's getting wider. I want to appeal to the president and all political actors, our leaders across board, that it is time to rein in Nigerians together. Whether we are Christian, we are Muslim, North or South, doesn't matter. Once there is equity and equality in the system, Nigerians love themselves, Nigerians can embrace themselves, and Nigerians can actually live together peacefully. This is what we want from the president. The peaceful coexistence of this country is very, very important, and we must embrace it. If government could do that, I believe that before we are sitting down to analyze 2020, all of us will be glad that we have a more united and more prosperous nation. Mm. Okay, thank you very much, sir. You can come inside our studio and you took mouth inside all the countdown we will do of the big stories for inside the Nigeria for the year 2019. Our people went there for house and I don't hear them. The most important thing we will go do now to work to see say our country go to the permanent site. And until we come back next week, Tuesday, as we do Tuesday, Thursday from 7 30, they discuss the cook when they inside the matter. To enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.